Draw card. Loyal. Ooh. Ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. Oh, this is gonna be some damage. I am excited about this. Today on Commander Replay, we check out this high-power Ishin Tokens build and find out if I can calculate damage correctly. Next on Commander Replay. Hey guys, there's two great ways to support the channel. All links are in the description below. Welcome back everyone, playing some more Ishin Two Heavens as One today. Today we're playing the High Power Tokens build. Uh, how do I feel about this hand? Doesn't have red mana. It's concerning. I'm gonna mull again, I think we can do better. Oh, that's awkward. If we catch a second land at any point, we go Boros Signet into Tithe. And that's not awful. Yeah, well, I'll risk it. We'll keep. There's another Signet, that's awkward. Uh, play, in the, play the Battlements. Really gonna need that second land. Uh, what's also bad is uh, we're gonna have to discard if, if we don't catch the land. Arbor Elf. Uh, Swords of Plowshares is not what we were looking for. Fantastic, get this party started. Uh, discard, I think the Goblin Bombardment. Boots. There's the land. It comes in tap, which is unfortunate, but at least we scry. Uh, another land on top. Fantastic. We'll keep that right there. And then we'll pass. So we've kind of given away our advantage of going first a little bit with this start, but I do like that we have card advantage, two pieces of ramp, and some pretty good gas. The rest of our hand is full of goodies. And uh, after the last game I played, so I just finished filming a game with uh, the Ishin Haymakers deck, and it was the most frustrating thing ever. 11 turns, and basically all I did was put mana in play. Like, I played a creature here or there, it got blown up, and just didn't draw anything that mattered all game. And, like, had some extra draws in there, too. Ramped with Sword of the Animus a little bit, pulling some lands out at one point, and just none of it mattered. Just mana flood, super hard. It's incredibly frustrating. So, uh, seeing a handful of gas here, I definitely kept one that's a little risky, but I think we're going to get out of it based on what, we'll, what we have. Sean Exiles is Mirag, at least we won't have to worry about it later. Uh, Lelia going into fish, yep. Opponent got themselves a Varus Silvermoon Ranger. 3 mana, 3-3, three, three, reach ward 1. Whenever you cast a creature or planeswalker spell, venture into the dungeon, triggers only once each turn. When you've completed a dungeon, create a 2-2 two, two green wolf token. Eh, it's not bad. Trinket mage for opponent. When you're facing a Teferi deck, the question is, do you have a Vandal Blast or a card similar to it? Because there will be a lot of mana rocks at some point in this game. Elvish Arch Druid, opponent gets the venture, yep. Elvish Mystic, yep. 4-4 four, four over to Sean. Brings it back to our turn, there's that mountain, play the mountain, cast Boros Signet. Oh, we could get... Hmm, we could go for the other Signet right here. Yeah, let's do that instead, actually. I think that makes more sense. It's more mana efficient. And then next turn we can go Tithe. Next turn is probably Tithe, Leonin Warleader, I think is where we're at. Lately, are coming our way, yep. The damage in this thing piles up quick. The fact that it scales uh, means that you have, like, an increasingly threatening creature as the game goes on. Like, every turn you don't answer it, it's going to be bigger next turn. Uh, there's this Conspiracy Theorist. Yeah, that's a really good card in that deck, so he'll definitely be casting that. Down to 36, 4 Commander. Equips the boots, yep. Now it's unblockable. Mana Vault, yep. Here comes Teferi. Well, maybe not. There's a lot of creatures in play. Nope, Teferi, yep. Name of the game. This is a pretty good attacker to uh, wear down the Teferi. Also a bunch of elves. Untaps four permanents. Disgusting. Gets Imerith Desert Doom. I, I haven't even seen this one. Five mana, five, five, ward four, flying. Has ward four as long as it's untapped. When it deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. Then if you have fewer than three cards in hand, draw cards equal to the difference. Uh, yeah, much harder to attack in now. Uh, opponent plays Soul Guide Lantern, exiles our Goblin Bombardment. That's frustrating. Uh, I did have plans for that Goblin Bombardment. Namely, this Sun Titan. Uh, Vivian, Champion of the Wilds. Opponent's gonna venture. They're in the Lost Mine of Fandelver. They make a treasure. Skull Clamp. Oh, man. So, like, what we probably should do, and I'm not gonna, is Swords paying the ward on this thing. That way, Sean has an attack in the Teferi, but... Uh, maybe we'll just let Fish be the threat for a while. Play the Tithe. Get Scrubland and get Plateau. Play the Scrubland. Cast Leona Warleader. Could cast the Skull Clamp right now. Yeah, I think I might. I have a feeling that Fish just, like, isn't ever going to attack with this thing. So, I don't know. And if she does, then we can just Swords it on our next turn. But we'll get the Skull Clamp in right now to use all our mana. There's a Force of Will, and that, that makes me unhappy. Now I'm grumpy. That was our card draw. Hide away. Does that trigger Lelia? Does not. I mean, First Strike is a thing. Ah, he's going to swing our way. That's annoying. He could force it over there with the First Strike and the thing. Mountain. 
Ignite the future. That's a card. That's also going to make Lily a huge. Oh, it's one or more. Okay. Wow, three lands tectonic giant. That's not the best. Ignite the future ever. Oh, you know what fish can do? Fish can attack and then use this to untap it. Just thought about that. Should have left the one up. Yeah, I mean, we should have left the one up for the swords instead of the skull clamp. Showing the skull clamp means that, you know, the potential of it getting shot. Yep, gonna attack. Gonna use the draw mode on Teferi. That's actually probably a break instead of just making a bajillion mana. Ooh, nice. Fish cracks the Soul Guide Lantern to draw a card. That means we can get that Skull Clamp back in a turn or two. We're gonna be on seven mana this turn. Uh, Teferi? God. So I think Fish is probably gonna phase some creatures out. Uh, Asgard is gonna play a Boon Seder. Okay. Let's pump this thing up. It's an 8-6. Love it. It's probably gonna get phased. If, if she phases it out, then I guess she'd have to plus one and then phase it out on her turn, but that does leave the door open for us. Uh, nice. Gonna return the nature on the mana vault. That should slow down the mana production. Draws and discards, yep. This is Pilgrimage. Good card. Into the Teferi. Gonna block. Pluses the Teferi. That means we're probably gonna get hit with the phase out when we try this. Hey guys, I got some new merch available. The official Commander Replay mug is now available in blue and colors beside blue. Uh, Tome of Legends is a card. Play the Plateau. So I think the plan this turn is Tome of Legends, Ishin. Then we can either draw a card or give it haste. Haste is more prone to... Okay. Yeah, Fish is going to phase out our Leonin War Leader. We can drop the Teferi if we give the Ishin haste now. Put a counter on. I think I like that. Give Ishin haste. Swing into Teferi Master of Time. Ooh. Two counters on the Tome of Legends. It's going to take us a while to get through all that card draw. Teferi down. Let's hope Sean does the right thing here and drops this Teferi. Yep. Going after it. Sends a conspiracy theorist our way, that's fine. Perverose to the graveyard. Exiles a feast and famine. Yeah, we'll probably be seeing that. There's a green deck over there. <laughs> They're more likely to get it than us. It's good news. Uh, no blocks. Feast and famine. Equip the feast and famine. Yep. Uh, Teferi goes down, by the way. That is huge. That'll slow fish down a lot. Can take her eight to recast. She doesn't have that kind of mana after the mana vault going down. So probably looking at a couple turns before we see Teferi again. Though she might start laying down the control, which uh, would not be great either. Still four cards in hand. Uh, recurring Insight. Okay. Gonna draw a lot of cards. Sean's got six in hand. That does tap Fish out, though. And yeah, we're gonna get a crack at it. We can haste Martin Stromgald and then leave up one mana for either Swords or Tome of Legends. That's gonna be the plan this turn. Asgard has this uh, nice 8-6 Vigilance Reach creature over here. That uh, Vigilance and Reach, hard to attack into that. I guess Sean's got the Feast and Famine. That would probably make the most sense. Teamer Sabertooth. That's a scary card. Sean sending secret messages. <laughs> Says he's eyeing to take out Asgard. I'm fine with that. Uh, 8 6 over to Sean. I thought this had vigilance. Oh, it's probably from that. Pro yeah, until your next turn. Okay. So no more vigilance. Sean goes down to 23. Well, that should. We'll just let them duke it out. Should get the old bad blood going. Cause baby, now we got bad uh. blood. You know what they say band aids don't fix bullet holes. Uh, Mana Crypt is beautiful. It is a beautiful card. Uh, play the Mana Crypt. Uh, our commander's already in. Right. Cast. And we need to make sure we do this right. Uh, we have one white floating. That's fine. Pay a red. Draw a card. Loyal. Ooh. Uh, might give up on the swords then and just slam this Loyal Apprentice. Yeah. Slam this Loyal Apprentice. Well, make sure we give the thing haste first so we don't... Mess up our colors. Target creature gains haste. Do that. Slam this loyal apprentice. Oh, this is going to be some damage. I am excited about this. Makes a thopter as we go to combat. Send uh, everything's going to get plus what? Four? Send the Martin Stromgold over to Sean. Everything else to fish. Two Leona War Leaders. Two Martin Stromgolds. Two Tome of Legends. Uh, Tome of Legends doesn't really matter. Stromgold on the bottom. I don't know that it'll hit. The Leonin War Leader tokens right away. Other attacking creatures. They are attacking. Oh my god, they're... Oh my god, that's so much damage. Oh my god. Well, we, we overestimated by a large margin. Um... <laughs> oh my god. Oh, the rest of the table's totally gonna kill us now. We should have left that swords up. Oh, but look at that damage. Down fish goes to negative 88. Yeah, I definitely overcompensated the damage a little 
Uh, probably could have taken Sean out right there also. <laughs> oh, he can kill us easily. He's going to have to. Yep. He's going to have to. Oh, we got greedy with the loyal apprentice. We needed to leave up swords. Oh, he's going after Asgard? Okay. Okay. Uh, if he has an extra combat, we die. Fog? Yep, savage beating. Good game. Good game. Yep, there's 11. Yeah, the issue is we got greedy going for the loyal apprentice, but I don't think we had enough. We weren't going to have a ton of damage. We were going to have, like, okay damage before it, so we would get two of those. It would all turn into four fours. I don't think it kills fish, yeah. Yep. Yep. We can scoop it there. Uh, yeah, I mean, we did the thing. We just needed to leave mana up for swords. That was really the issue. Um, the other thing, too, is, like, if we didn't have to discard our Goblin Bombardment, then early in the game, because we missed the land drop, then it doesn't get exiled, and we have that to, uh, really kind of keep the board under much better control, so. Yep, uh, just got greedy on multiple occasions in this game. That was really the name of the game, but, uh, the, the deck did its thing, right? We pounded out 100 damage in... On turn seven. Always feel good about that. So, anyway, hope you guys enjoy the video. As always, feel free to comment, like, or subscribe. Thank you for watching. I want to thank my awesome Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. If you want to help support the channel, vote on which decks I play next, or get some good games of Spell Table, be sure to check out my Patreon at the link below.